Kira Levi, representative of CORE, CORE Music Foundation, and Red Hot Radio.fm. I am so overjoyed that I have my larger than life guest here. Let's say this together. Tamari T and, and the Electra Company. <laughs> that's right. That's who we have here, our lead singer. Tell me about that House of Blues show. That show was real fun. We had Pastor Funk and the Pool Pit players opened up. Jovan Landry went right before us. Nice. And we came out and we did our thing. And it was like fun to have the full band on stage and, you know, just expressing our vibes and coming out there and doing what we do. And even in the beginning of that, the guitar riffs you hear, that was like random. We, we, we didn't practice that, but <laughs> it, it went well with what happened in the entrance and everything. So. so what do you consider your musical genre or style? Mm -hmm. I would say we call it exotic funk. And that happened because when I first started this band a couple of years ago, I used to say, oh, we do funk, rock, soul, house, Afrobeat, everything. I used to like have a long list of stuff when people say, what you do? But we were playing a show one um, time at the Underground Wonder Bar in the basement. And this DJ, he was DJing between sets, and he came up, he was like, man, y'all sound is exotic, it's exotic, he kept saying it. And it popped in my head, like, oh yeah, exotic funk, you know. Well, I call it gumbo, because there's <laughs> everything in there, and it is a good time, trust yeah. me, you gotta check out their show. Now let's talk about the name, Tamari T and the Electra Company. Give us the rundown on that whole situation. That started when I first started the band. I was on a little hiatus for a second. And one of my good friends, he's like, you want to come to this video shoot with me? I'm like, yeah. I didn't know what it was, but we get there and it was like a live show. And I was like, okay. I've been out this scene for a while, but okay. And as I was sitting there watching the band perform and you know, they were cool. I don't remember the name of the band. But they were okay. And this, my spirit, no <laughs> my um, spirit told me like, hey, um, you about to start a band, and the name of it gonna be the company, with a K, okay. K U M P A N Y. So I was like, okay. Went home, told the guitarist at the time that I was like auditioning. I was like, I got the name of the band. I'm gonna call it the company. He was like, you call it the Electric Company. I was like, no, nah, that's Schoolhouse Rock. Right, right. So I was like, maybe Electra company. So I was like, Tamari T and the Electra Company. Because I feel like, you know, while we use the lightning bolt as like one of the main symbols because we bring in that life. When you get, somebody gets shocked, they get energized. Absolutely. It hurt, but they get energized. Absolutely. But that's how I feel that we do it, you know, we doing what we doing. Absolutely. Yeah. And I have attended some of these shows and they are electrifying. Yeah. Everything about yeah. the energy is uplifting, yeah. you know, yeah. so I, I, I want you guys to keep that going. Yeah. You guys are definitely a uh, core or yeah. core music foundation <laughs> approved band yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, so Tamari T, tell me your full name because we just get a little piece of that. Mm -hmm. Tell us your whole name. Well, it stops at Tamari T. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess that's all we get. All right, okay, moving, moving right along. So some of the places you've performed in the past, House of Blues, where else? House of Blues, we've done guest appearance at the Blues Festival before. Okay. And I've done stuff solo there before. Um, Mothers, original Mothers on like Division or something like that. Martyrs. We opened up for Hypnotic Brass Ensemble. Oh, I love Hypnotic. Yeah. Shout out yeah. to Hypnotic. Rest in peace, Bottle Phil. Yeah. Phil Coran in the building. Yeah. All over. Yeah. Go on. We um, Pilsen Fest. Did a couple of festivals. Um, one place we did like this summer festival for this uh, company called Alcove. That was a cool situation. Okay. 
trying to think. Underground Wonder Bar. All right. What about Elbow Room? Yeah, Elbow Room. Mm -hmm. And did you say Blues Fest? Yes, yes. Okay. Blues okay. Fest. Argyle Night Market. That's okay. another festival they do every summer. We'll probably be doing that again this year. Awesome. So. Awesome. So check them out yeah. at that uh, at that festival. Yeah. Um, if anybody uh, wants to know more about this this band, how do they reach you? Well, they can find us on Facebook at Tamari T and the Electra Company. That's Electra E L E K T R A and Company K U M P A N Y, or Instagram Electra underscore Company. Okay. And now, usually I do that at the end of the show, but, you know, yeah. I want to do that like twice because yeah. I really want people to check you yeah. guys out, yeah. you know. So that's um, where we are with that. As far as um, this hiatus that you spoke about earlier, yeah. what did you do before you started this new band? Um, before I was with um, this band called the Red Line Lounge. Okay. And we were like a, we were a cover band. We did a lot of Prince, Morris Day in the Time, James. We did a lot of funk. So I was with that band for about, that was the first band I actually. A lot of Prince, a lot of funk. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm seeing like, the influence. Go on. <laughs> that was like the first band I um, joined. Like when I started, I always been doing music since I was little. And for some reason, growing up, I just used to sit in my room practicing and singing for no, like, didn't have no goal in mind or nothing no like that. Just yeah, singing. just doing it. And um, I was like, you know what? Probably was 17, 18. I was like, I should just get in the band right now and figure it out. So I ended up getting in touch with this band. They were looking for like a lady um, person to, you know, lead the band. And he saw a lady my person. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he saw he saw he saw my um, a feminine energy. Yeah. He saw my name. He thought you know I was a woman from my name. I was like, no. And when he talked to me on the phone, he was like, oh, man, I thought you was a woman. I'm like, nah. He was like, still come to the audition. I'm like, all right, cool. So I go to the audition. It was like, um, I don't know if you ever heard of the Chocolate Factory on the west side of Chicago. Went there. I'm going to this spot. He's like, well, what song you know? I'm like, I know Jungle Love, I know Gigolos, Get Along. I know all these songs. Right. So I was like, all right, we, we know them, too. Because you were a cover band, yeah. so you, right, right. So they were asking me. I'm like, yeah, I already know them. He's like, you know all the words? I'm like, yeah. I just know them just for me already liking these songs. Sure. And so... I did, uh, I think, Jungle Love or something like that. And it was like, man, we're not even, it's not an audition. We want you to be a part of this band. Like, I'm like, all right, and I'll do it. And so from that band, I got a lot of training, mentorship, everything to know how to get to the next level and do have my own band, and, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So the cover band, how long were you with them? Mm, it had to be about three to four years. Nice. Yeah. And so the new band, Tamari T., and the Electra Company, how long have you guys been established? Mm, it's been four, four, about four or five years now. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So between singing in the house to playing in the cover van to having your own brand, mm. how long total would you consider your musical career to have been so far? Uh, it's been about 10 years. Now. 10 years? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, what is, okay, forgive me, right? <laughs> but I got to ask, mm. where do you get this sense of style? Like, do you sew? Do you, like, how, are you a costume designer? Like, I've seen stuff that looks like Earth, Wind, and Fire. <laughs> I've seen Bootsy Collins. I've seen all the and your own original yeah. stuff that yeah. I've never seen anybody like this shit. Like I mean, excuse me, <laughs> but where do you? You got a pink earring <laughs> popping out, and then you got beads and all of this other decorative, creative a shell. Like, how yeah. do you pull these things together? Um, I just usually, if I see something, I'm like, oh, that's, that look cool. I'm gonna wear that. Even if somebody like. Oh, you shouldn't wear that. It ain't gonna look right. Somebody might think I don't care. I mean, you know, I just feel like being yourself. You Absolutely. should, you know. So I just wear whatever I feel good. If it's if my boots was pink, I'll wear pink boots. You know, purple boots. I don't care. Yes. It's like um, nobody can tell you how to dress when you a custom person. You make your own style. You sure. know, and so. It's just it's it's all over the place. I have I have friends that are fashion designers. 
and I usually don't let anybody style me because I can do it myself. But um, I have a couple of friends, they'll find peace and be like, hey, here, I got this for you. You put it with what you do. Like, sure. you know, instead of me trying to, like, put your own style together, you already got your style. So, right. whatever, like, it's, it's really, it's not a long process, but it's like whatever happens, happens. So yeah. even like the um, the video, that the intro video, mm -hmm. when you were at House of Blues, you had on... I don't know, maybe some eagle's feathers or something <laughs> like that. How did that design come about? Well, um, <clears throat> Actually, how did that whole outfit come about? Because wow. I love the way you dress. Thank Just you. so you Thank know, you. I love your style. Thank you. Um, gold is one of my favorite colors. So a lot of times I wear a lot of gold. But that um, piece, I was at a festival. I seen this lady selling them. She had like a lot of different things. I was like, let me get that. I threw it on right at that time at that festival and they were walking around with it. But I was like, you know, I can wear this on stage. Or I just wear it anytime. Right. Just walk down the street if I wanted to. Right. But then I had a friend um put like studs and stuff on it. And I was like, yeah, that'll look cool too. Just mm -hmm. do I didn't have no idea for it. I was like, just do what you do and yeah. I'll wear it. Yeah. And so that's how that happened. And then nice. I get um body painted. That's part of the stage sure. as well. Mm -hmm. My um, good friend Taryn Jackson, she does all the body paint and she's also a part of the band that's the you know artist painting while we're performing. Nice. So. Yes, I have experienced uh, that and it's uh, <laughs> quite amazing. It was shocking the first time that I saw it yeah. but then you know after <laughs> the first 30 seconds I just got used to it. I'm like oh, okay, <laughs> well naked titties running around. But <laughs> we <Yeah>. free! Yeah. <laughs> And that is a whole part of the beauty of this experience. It's yeah. freedom. Yeah. It's, it's freedom. It's their own brand of freedom. I've never seen in this age group, in this day and time, in Chicago, a group of millennials that not only are socially conscious and aware, but also creative on all levels and just free and fearless. So like I said, if you get the opportunity Go out and check out this band. They are a performance band right now, and um, music. Eventually, there's going to be some recordings available for sale, but right now, anytime there is a show that these guys are doing, please check them out. When is your next show? We're doing a Bantu Fest, July 27th. Bantu Fest, yeah. July 27th. I'm already going to be yeah. there, so yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. They go about 3, 3.30. 3.30. Yeah. All right, check yeah. them out. Check them out, 3.30, Band 2 Fest, this summer in Chicago. Now, as far as your staff, is there any mystical energies oh, yeah, yeah. related to this staff, or is it for show? Yeah, it is. I, mean, I made it, so it is like a lot of energy on it. No a doubt. Lot of it. Okay. So my old jewelry I've made, I put up here. This thing was actually a pair of shades, and I took it in. Made it into the top. Do piece. you mind if I just uh, I, I just want to put this in the camera just a little bit so y'all can see this uh, this staff. This is kind of like that staff that Moses used to part the Red <laughs> Sea, you know. But this is uh, the Tamari T staff. All right, and he parts the the audience with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now your lyrics. Mm -hmm. Tell me, how do you? come up with these profound lyrics. Like for instance, what's the name of that song where you talk about placing your feet on rocky ground? <laughs> and why rocky ground instead of solid ground? You know, tell me your thought process in your lyric creation. Um, well, that song is called The Clouds. Okay. And um, usually I go to a spiritual place when I hear like the words that come to me when I'm making the music. And I just hear the words, the music already speaking to me. Instead of me trying to force words on top of the music, I let the music tell me what it should, what should be said. Sure. You know? And so I just write it down. You know, it happens all the time. So yeah. some people actually, okay, so do you meditate before? Are you in trance or do you just allow spirits to move through you? Um, usually my meditation is when I'm in the midst of, you know, doing it, like, actually right there making the music and everything and that song actually I was in my studio just messing around on the bass and it just started coming out like 
the first the clouds part started coming out, and the rest of it just started flowing with it. And nice. I was like, okay, let me go make this into a whole full song real quick. Nice. So, do any of your lyrics reflect real life daily experiences? Oh yes, yes. Okay. Yes, we um, as far as the full pit experience, I like to touch on everything. I like to make people think, dance, everything that's part of life, you know. But I'm more on the spiritual side of life, like the things we need to uplift our spirit, Absolutely. you know. And so I talk about that type of stuff. We talk about dance and having fun. And yeah, we talk about like sexual things because that's a part of life as well. That's a and part of procreation <laughs> yeah, and yeah. life and joy. Yeah. And go but any, anything I got to do with uplifting, you know, people, uplifting the masses, like I don't. I'm not into making low vibrational music because that's not that. what I'm here for. Love that. That's another reason why yeah. I absolutely encourage, yeah. support, and promote this band because that's the vibration that I'm trying to operate off yeah. of as yeah. well. You know, living in this world, it's easy to get caught up and bogged down yeah. with all the negativity. Yeah. And when you go to a show like theirs, right, Tamari T and the Electra Company, it kind of raises your vibration, you know? Yeah. Whatever stresses and things that you were feeling before you went into that situation, I'm not even gonna call it a show. Cause yeah. it's it's an experience, you know, it's a show, but it's 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 um it's in a way it's kinda like um have you ever been to a sweat lodge mm. with Native Americans where you go in and no, no, I, and I purge a little bit? No, no. Well in a way it's kinda like you're purging some of the stuff that the world throws at you, yeah. you know, and yeah. you just go in there and once again, you can be free. Yeah. Now, sometimes there might be space constraints and you might not be as free as you want to be, but the energy in itself is just like bathing you, yeah. you know, yeah. so you coming out of there like you got a little sage yeah. on you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, tell me, is there anything that you do not like? your audience to do when they come to your show. We're going to do some etiquette now, okay? Some mm -hmm. Tamari T and Electra Company, Electra Company etiquette. When you come to my show, when you come to their show, what are some of the do's and don'ts? Well, the main thing is I wouldn't want anybody not paying attention to what's mm -hmm. going on. Like, you know, while we, we, we are not like background music. So, you know, some people go to places and they're like having a conversation through the whole situation. And that's probably one of my biggest pet peeves. Um, phone is the same thing. I understand people taking pictures. That's cool. But if they like sitting in their phone the whole time, yeah, you shouldn't be there. Like, right. Why are you here? You right, know? right. You know, but that's really, as long as nobody not acting crazy, trying to grab on dancers or crazy stuff like that right right that has be happened. respectful yeah, be respectful because like we got yeah. mocha and yeah. a couple other folks yeah. that you know get a little yeah, yeah. special <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they get a little free yeah and we want to encourage their freedom and we don't want you messing with them yeah, like that yeah okay okay like, and that's probably that's it yeah that's okay right. all right so we can go to another quick little clip Drowning. It's the pushing all around me. Reaching for the sky. Reaching for the sky. I tell myself the reasons why. Pick me up, turn me around. Take my feet on rock ground. Reaching for the sky. So I guess we are back with Tamari T and the Electra Company. Tell us about the band. How many people are in that huge band? Mm, that's Ranges between 11 to 16 of us, depending on, you know, when I feel like having the whole full thing, we have horns, uh, two more percussionists, stuff like that. But we have, the root is about 11 of us. 11, yeah. okay. Where was that actually shot? That was um, this event 
summer out cold. It was um no 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 out cold summers party. It was like a private event, but they hired the band because they saw us before and wanted to have us there. And it was real cool. It was a lot yeah. of stuff going on that night. Yeah, I, I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I cool. have to take your word for it. Well, for those of us who did not, well, I saw the whole clip earlier, but for those of you who had not seen the whole clip, it was an outdoor festival, lots of people dancing and even doing some line dancing yeah. and some all kind of stuff. Were you even playing the djembe at one point? Yeah. yeah. You always play the djembe yeah. at your shows, yeah. don't you? Yeah, sometimes, but most of the time. Most of the time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what inspired you to play djembe? Well, I started off, that was actually, I started off playing congas. That was like before I even got into wanting to do the front man thing. I was focused on, oh, I'm just being in the background, play drums. I was like, no, that ain't happening. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> I just still incorporate it in the music anyways, because that was like the first instrument. Well, actually, bass was, no guitar actually. Then was bass. Then I was like, okay, I wasn't working out with those. I'm like, I'm just gonna play hand drums, any type of drums, and went from there. Percussionist, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. After my own heart, I'm a percussionist okay. myself. I play okay. djembe, I play conga, bongos, and I should. I wish I played piano, but I never did quite oh, yeah. get. You know, yeah. I I can do some MIDI stuff to yeah. record, but I, I'm not really no you know, yeah. band <laughs> type of pianist, but I really love what you do. Do you play any other instruments? Um, timbales as well. Ah, um, nice. I, on the House of Blues show, I that was like the first time it's going out live doing it. Nice. And, and um, play a little bit of keys. Everything, I don't really read music. I just, it's a spiritual, natural thing. Sure. So, um, and bass. You play by ear yeah. and by the feel. Yeah. Nice. Guitar, I'm um, still debating with that right now. So but have you, um, I don't know, did the guitar like hurt your fingers when know, you started I just, playing? I just, um, I don't know, it wasn't calling me like the bass and drums and stuff. Like right. That. I'm more like in that realm. Okay. Well, I, even with the music I make, we, that's like the most important part is making sure the bass and drums are locked mm -hmm. because that's the that's the heartbeat, that's Absolutely. the thump, that's the thunder of what we're doing. Absolutely. So, and then everything else, like the guitar is very important. Every, every instrument is important in what we're doing. The guitar brings like that lightning and, you know, heavy, you know, type situation. Keys, like the color around it, so. Nice, okay. Yeah. I, I agree with you, because yeah. the drums and the bass have to lock have to keep everything steady yeah, yeah. and everything is another layer on top yeah. of that. So yeah, you understand that and it comes through in your yeah, work. Yeah. So who writes the music, oh, the nice. actual yeah. music, yeah. not the lyrics, but the the sound aspect, the oh, yeah. composition? Um, usually me, I, um, I want to say I do everything because we have the band as well. The process is I'll bring a demo track with um, like the band members' parts, the vocals, background vocals, and I'm like doing everything on there. I take it to the band, and I'm like, okay, here we go. This demo track. I need everybody to stay on the foundation, but if you have something you want to add and it's cool and we agree, then we we'll go we go from there. Very right. nice. So you are a singer, a songwriter, a composer, an arranger. What else? A fashion designer, <laughs> a stylist. What else? Love making all this. Kids. Love making. Uh, okay, uh, what else? It's a lot. Yeah. I am a father as well. A father. Yeah, Let's yeah, talk yeah, about your yeah. child. What do you have? A boy? A girl? Yeah, it's a boy. A boy? Four years old. Four yeah. years old. Is yeah. your child walking in your footsteps? Footsteps he, um, as a musician. He loves. He loves music. I know when I bring him and I have him, he loves to run to my keyboard and like play on it. Nice. And drums. Nice. So I'm just letting him percussionist. naturally. Percussionist. You got yeah. another percussionist on your hand. Let him naturally feel, you know, what he want to do. And I have, like, nieces and nephews as well that's, like, the same way. I have a niece. She loves to sing, dance around and stuff like that, too. Okay. So I might have a group later a on. junior you know. band popping <laughs> off. Okay, okay. All right. So tell me, as far as your childhood goes, did you have a great childhood, a bad childhood, an yeah. in-between childhood? It was, it was cool. I feel like I had a good childhood. Um, 
I grew up on the south side of Chicago, in the Englewood area. And um, we, my family, we were like, you know, tight. Like we were like, a, my grandma, granddad, everybody were involved, my dad, mom. So it was like, one thing, my grandma mother is the main reason why I'm like in music. Because when we were at a young age, she had us singing for people, random people. We'd be walking to the store in the grocery store. Hey, y'all, come sing this song. And look at my grandkids. She just like boost us up all day long. And so we just <laughs> had to, you know, do it. Right. And uh, my dad, he introduced me more to a lot of like, as far as like instruments. He gave me my first pair of congas and everything like nice. that. Nice. And um, you know, that that was, they helped me as far as finding like musical influences. Like my grandmother used to listen to a lot of James Brown. The first song I heard ever by James Brown as a kid was Super Bad. And that song just, the whole groove and everything yes. stuck with me. And yes. I was like, what is he doing? And I started yeah. watching videos of him and same thing, Prince, all of them, Bob Marley. I got a lot of, you know, influences that help create what I'm doing today. They, their spirit. You know, physically they're gone, but the spirit's still here. And I'm another vessel, you know, using that energy they left here. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. And then, like I said, it's all reflected mm -hmm. in your work, and it is a joy and a pleasure to watch and to be a part of. Yeah. Um, as far as the band is concerned, there are different groups within mm -hmm. the band mm -hmm. as well. Is that correct? Yes. All yes. right, let's talk about some of those people and some of what what they contribute. Okay, so first I will start off with said Pastor Funk because he's been with the band for, he was like the OG member of the band. He started off with me and everything. He has a band, um, Room 11. I used to, we swapped in and out of each other band. and. Um, He's a funk rock scene, heavy on the funk rock house scene. Then you had another band, Past the Funk and the Pulpit Players, and that's like a straight funk band. They're real cool, and we all like a big family and what we're doing. So it's like Parliament Funkadelic thing, but we all come together for different shows. He right. need me for a show, I go there. Like next week, we actually doing a Prince tribute, so I'll be there with him. Um, then we have Big Will. He's a percussionist. He started out in the Red Line Lounge, the first band. So I brought him from that band to this band with me. Then we have Del Marie. She's a you know hip hop artist, dancer, writer. She's super cool. And her being in the band was like she was starting off her artist and doing the live music thing. So when I met her, I told her like, hey, well you can work under me and I can mentor you, show you how to you know and you just do your thing and still dance, feel free. She really reminds me of like Janae Monet. Is that her name? Jeanette She'll or Janae Monet? She'll probably she heard that right well, now. Well, it, it, there's a, a little resemblance yeah. there, especially when she had the hair yeah. before. But go on. I love her. Yeah. She's a talent yeah. as well. And then we have Jazz Star. She's a great vocalist, a writer, and she's one, again, coming out as an artist. And I told her the same thing, like, hey, join this band, you know, learn whatever you can learn, you know, because I want, that's my main thing, everybody in the band, I want them to grow everything. Saxophone player, Eric, he has a, a group, I hope I say it right, Dissonant. Dissonant? The Dissonant, uh, it's another part of it, but he's a great musician, composer, everything. I love him because we met through um, Jovine Landry and her band, we met, and I told him, like, hey, you can, Come with us anytime you want. Uh, we have Zach, keyboard player. I met him. He's from Kentucky. He moved to Chicago probably about a year or two ago. Met him. Told him, like, hey, I got this band looking for keys, synth. He came. He started working with us. Um, Alex, the guitarist, he's new to the band, but he's super cool as well. MJ, same thing. He's kind of new to the band, but he's like a great guitarist. He's producer. A ranger, everything. Like we have some heavy hitters in the band, sound engineer, um, and we have West, drummer extraordinaire. Like he's like the drummer I've been looking for. <laughs> that, you know, okay, just yeah. let me just say something. Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> that man can play the drums. Yeah. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Uh, Mike Douglas, uh, that man can play the drums. <laughs> but anyway, go on. Yeah. And we have we have other members as well. And then we have another guitarist named Michael Damani. 
He does like blues, heavy on the blues scene. But I met him a while back. He plays with us with us when he can. Um, like I said, Taryn Jackson, she's part of the band as a painter. She does like the body paint situation. And am I missing anybody? I don't think I am. And then you, you're mad. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, one Nisho more band? Yeah, Neshoba. Neshoba. He's a new vocalist in the band as well. Okay. Yeah, Scoop and Cache. I met them years ago, and they started managing the band now. So okay. It's like a family, family situation. We all Absolutely. cool, high on vibrations, and you know. Yeah. Absolutely, and. Uh, Core Music Foundation is actually happy to work with you guys and to uplift you guys and to support you guys in any way that we can because we see some young talent that is not only exceptionally talented, mm -hmm. but uplifting the people yeah, and that's what yeah. we're here to do, you yeah. know? So if that's what you're doing and that's what, you know, we're here to, to, to help you and support you yeah. along the way. Um, there are lots of uh, artists that have been, um, in bad situations mm -hmm. as they climb the ladder, mm -hmm. and we're here to protect you mm -hmm. from going through those types of situations. Mm -hmm. We teach people about publishing, copyrights, and a lot of things to just protect you and help be that additional support around mm -hmm. you as you go to the next level. So once again, give us the information where we can contact you if we're interested or as we are interested, we're very interested. Tell us uh, how to find you. So you can find us on Facebook, Tamari T, T A M A R I E T, and uh, Electra Company, Electra, E L E K T R A, and Company, K U M P A N Y. Instagram, Electra underscore Company. And you'll see a lot of different, we got all our information up there. One thing I forgot to mention we last year we won um most outstanding band at chicago music Awards. yes 37th so, chicago yeah. music award most outstanding yeah. band i think we just <laughs> give you a hand right now just for that and i agree you yeah. you guys are like the most outstanding band that i've seen yeah. you know lately here yeah. in chicago so congratulations yeah. thank you all right, well, thank you all for tuning in to RedHotRadio.fm. I'm your host, Yakira Levi, and I am also representing Core Music Foundation with my larger-than-life, amazingly awesome band, singer, performer, frontman of Tamari T and the Electra Company. Check them out, y'all. This is it.